so quiet. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and of course, you all don't get to see Matthew 24 uh, on the screen either. Uh, it's Matthew 24, and uh, we'll begin with verse 24. So it should be easy to remember Matthew 24, 24. As we look at it, it says, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders, deceiving, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you before. Therefore, if they say to you, Look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner room, do not believe. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heavens, and the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven of power and glory. And he will send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see that all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Assuredly I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord. Our Father, as we come to your name of Christ, we just pray that you be with us as we look upon your word. We pray that you'll guide us, direct us. Lord, that we'll be able to take this and apply it to who we are this morning. For we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Christ came the first time as that babe in a manger. There was no big thing about that as far as the rest of the world was concerned. It was a quiet entry into the, into the world. Uh, he came to head to the cross. He came, uh, a lot of times we refer to him as a lamb, because that's what the Bible refers to him as. He came for that purpose. And yes, he was Lord of Lords, and yes, he's King of Kings, <clears throat> but he came to where there was room. He still does that today, by the way. He still comes to those who give to him room in their heart. And in Revelation, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I'll come into him and sup with him, and, and he with me. The picture is of Christ wanting to come in and wanting to have that fellowship with man. But a time is coming when that is not the way Christ is going to do things. The disciples asked him a question, and that's in Matthew 24, verse 3. Tell us when these things shall be. What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Now, the disciples thought they were asking one question. <laughs> The disciples thought all of these things are going to happen all at the same time. But in reality, the disciples are asking three questions in that verse. When will these things be? That's the destruction of Jerusalem and, and the, uh, you know, in 70 AD that we look at. The sign of your coming. When is Christ going to return? And I have had that question asked a lot of times recently. I'll get into that maybe a little bit later. And, and the third question is, and the end of the age? When is the end of the world? When is the end going to be? So as we look at the, the understand that he has these three questions, Christ is answering part of that this morning. Excuse me. Verse 24. False Christ. False prophets. You know, that's been going on since 1 John. <laughs> and when did, when did John write that? Who was John a contemporary of? 
Well, John was a contemporary of Jesus Christ. He was one of the disciples. And, and false Christ and false prophets have gone out into the world since that time of Christ. And uh, I had a whole list of them that I was looking at on the internet the other day, and it's just one right after another, right after another, and, and they've always been there. And what have they done? They have de done exactly what he says here. They have deceived many. You see, Christ, he has one message for the world. And that message is a very simple message. And it's a lot of times people get it convoluted and they try to make it into something that it's not. But it's a very simple message. God loves you. That's what you, what you said earlier. God loves you. He sent his son to die for you, to take upon him the, your sin, and he has offered salvation through Jesus Christ. It's a very simple message. It's amazing to me how people don't want to believe that. They want everything else in this world except Jesus Christ. And I like what he says here as, as you read this verse. There will be many false prophets and false Christs. And they'll show great signs and wonders and deceive even if possible the very elect. Can Satan do things? Oh, amen, he can. Can he do signs and wonders? Yes. Can he do all kinds of things? Sure he can. <clears throat> and we will say that our God is a God of miracles, and I believe that. But miracles is not the reason God is here. And when you look at what he says in John about the miracles that were recorded in the book of John, he says these things are written that you may believe on who Jesus Christ is. Amen. It's not so that you can worship the miracles or things of that nature. Even Christ at one point when he was feeding the 10,000, he said, you didn't come out here to hear what I have to say. You didn't come out here to, to worship. You came out here because you got something to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, free meal. Uh, people will come. Uh, that was, that's what he was saying. And, and people are deceived so often by what others say rather than what Jesus Christ has to say. It's interesting to me, uh, and I can use this because it goes back a long time ago. I remember getting a book in 1988 that said 88 reasons why Christ is going to come in 1988. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I got another one in 1989 that says 89 reasons why Christ is going to come in 89, why I missed it in 88. the very elect. And he said, I've told you this before, and yes, they have. If he's in the desert, don't go. If he's in, uh, in a room, says don't believe it. How is Christ going to come to end the world? Everybody's going to know it. Everybody's going to know it. I love the next verse that, that he talks about here. Because it's not something that is done in a manger somewhere. It's not something where people can ignore it or, or, or say, I don't want anything to do with it. He says, as the lightning goes from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And, and I love a good lightning storm. Sorry, Rachel. I, I do love them. And I love to watch them. Because lightning strikes without warning. It's just suddenly, there it is. And I love how it lights up the night sky. Yep. And you can see everything. Beautiful. And sometimes, <laughs> yeah, the swirly things go. Not so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes there's so much lightning, it's just one right after another after another. <coughs> and, and it's like daylight out there. And I love that. But one of the things Christ is saying here, He is saying when He comes back, everyone is going to know it. Mm -hmm. He's not coming back that second time as a babe in a manger. We use a verse so often, it's in Philippians, where it says this, Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. That's what's going to happen on that day. 
It's going to be a day where the whole world sees him and knows who he is. Look at that verse for a moment. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. When lightning fills the night sky and does that, is there any place you can't see it? You may try to hide. Gizmo tries to go under the blankets. And then the thunder shakes everything. Mm -hmm. I love that, by the way. Something we don't get out here in Oregon. No. We don't get the swirly things too often <laughs> either. <laughs> He's coming. He's coming in power. We have wimpy lightning here in Oregon. <laughs> you'll see a lightning bolt and you'll go, that was kind of skinny. It didn't have much power to it. And, and uh, comparing it to some other lightning that I've seen. But even that wimpy, skinny lightning can do damage. And it can start forest fires. It can split trees in half. It can kill. Our car got hit with lightning years ago and knocked us off the road. I remember as a child, lightning hit the tree that I wasn't too far from. And, and I don't remember ever hearing the thunder, but I remember hearing the lightning. I remember getting up off the ground a long ways away from that tree going, what just happened? <laughs> lightning has power. And God is coming in power. I don't have to be afraid of it. I don't have to worry about it. He's coming. He's my God. I love verse 28. <clears throat> you, you look at verse 28 and you go, now what in the world is he talking about? For wherever the carcasses is there, the eagles will be gathered together. And you go, how in the world does this relate to Christ coming and Christ coming in power? Here's the picture. And instead of eagles, think of ravens or think of vultures or, or things of that nature. There's a carcass on the ground, and where are the eagles, or where are the ravens, or the vultures, or wherever? They're circling above it, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and they, they're able to, you can look at that and go, something's dead out there. <clears throat> Christ is using a saying from his time to say, this <coughs> is exactly what it is. It's a truth that he is saying. And he's saying when you look and you see all these eagles flying, you know that there's a carcass there. When you look and you hear this and you understand that this is the truth, you see that he is coming and there is no denying it. <clears throat> now, we, we have sayings today that we, we use to say that that's the way it is. My brother, I'll, I'll ask him, do you want a piece of chocolate pie or something like that? And he'll say, is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's he saying there? He's saying, definitely, I want whatever it is that you're offering. Uh, you know, so we have these type of sayings. This is just something that is used during that time to say, what I am telling you is exactly true. Christ is coming. And people will go around and say, well, where is the promise of his coming? Or they'll make fun of us for believing that Christ is coming. Let me tell you something. He is coming. Just as surely as those birds gather together for that carcass, he is coming. He is coming. Amen. I know that's a weird picture to think about, but every time you see that now, you can think of this. Christ is coming. Just as surely. Yeah, just as surely. When we see that, we know he's coming. And he's not coming as a baby. He's coming <coughs> as a king. He's coming as the one who is in, in authority. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the heavens, 
the powers of the heavens will be shaken, then the signs of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. We're not going to be mourning. Why will they mourn? Because they don't belong to Jesus. Because they don't belong to Jesus. Exactly right. They missed it. The Revelations, it says they pray for the, they pray. It's, uh, I find it interesting. They pray not to God, but to the mountains. Hide us from God. Because they've missed it. They, they don't know who God is. And they understand that they are now standing in the judgment of God, not in the love of God. And when he comes, he talks about dividing the sheep from the goats. And he talks about what is going to happen to those without God. So it's evident that they would mourn. Christ came bring joy. Christ came to bring salvation. Christ came to show us God's love. But Christ is coming to bring God's judgment. And those who are under it. The Lord. Because notice what it says. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. with power and glory. Power. Who is greater than God? No one. Who can tell God what to do? You know, I always like when they say somebody's the most powerful man on the earth. Well, maybe he is, or maybe not. I don't know. But I do know who has more power than them. Mm -hmm. I do know where it talks about the great white throne judgment, and it talks about the great and the small. In other words, the kings and the rulers and those that think they have it all and those that don't have any that will all be there. I do know that Christ says that all judgment is given to him in heaven and in earth. And I do know when he says he's coming in power, there's a verse in Revelation that illustrates it so greatly. They gather together against God. Can you imagine that? The armies of the earth gather together against God. And they think somehow they're going to fight against God. And, and God comes, and, and, and you know what he does? He speaks, and they're all defeated. That's power. And that's what he's coming in. <coughs> he's the one who spoke and created the heavens and earth in the first place. That's why I think it's so ludicrous that they decide that they're going to fight against God. It's coming in power. It's coming in glory. Who's going to stop him? I mean, the first time he came, and he came headed to a cross, and they took him and put him on the cross, and they drove the nails into him, and they hung him on the cross, and did that because he allowed it. Remember what he said in the garden to Peter? Put away your sword. Because I can call to my heavenly Father and he can send me 12 legions of angels. When he comes the next time, he's not headed to a cross. He has those 12 legions of angels and more. And he doesn't even need them. He came the first time when he says in Isaiah, he opened not his mouth. And we should all be very thankful that he didn't. But when he comes the second time, 
He will open his mouth. He will speak. The world will fall before him and kneel before him. I like what he says, coming with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet. They'll gather his elect from the four winds and from the end, from, from one end of heaven to the other. His people. Us. Those that believe in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we will also see his coming in power. We will also see his coming in glory. But what does that mean for us? It doesn't mean that we have to tremble, we have to hide, we have to be fearful. We are coming together to be with him. I, I love something that he tells me. It's in John, it's in chapter 17, where he says, you are my friends. Do you realize that we're a friend of this one who is coming in power and in might? We are a friend of God, and, and we are being gathered together to be with him. I like what he says in Revelation where he talks about he wipes away every tear from the eye. I like what he says in Revelation where he says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. I like the idea that he has that he is waiting and coming for us. I, I like that he comes here and he doesn't just wait up in heaven and say, Come on up here with me. He comes here for us. I love all that. And I love where he says the, the, the trumpet's going to sound and all this is going to go on. And we're going to see this happen. I don't know if we'll see it from the side where the dead in Christ shall rise first, or we'll see it from then we which are alive and together shall uh, be caught up in the air to meet the Lord and uh, meet the Lord in the air. I don't know which side we'll see it from, but we'll see it. your verse that he's talking about. You see, we talk about promises. He says, learn the parable of the fig tree. When you see the leaf come out, you understand that spring's coming. I'm looking forward to spring. We've had Christmas. Winter needs to be over. It's yeah, time for spring. Amen. <laughs> That's my, uh, my philosophy, anyway. Preach, brother, preach. <laughs> but he says, when you see the fig tree, you know, the bloom, you know the summer is nigh. I know these things are even at the door. And I want you to look at verse 35 for a moment, where it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall by no means pass away. God has made a promise. The promise of his return. And he has said this is the way it's going to happen. The world is going to see... <coughs> Jesus Christ come in power and in glory and in might. And it's going to shake the worlds. <laughs> I love all these people who think they have so much power when they stand before Jesus Christ. Not going to matter. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not the word of God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You mentioned that. And why is his promise valid? Because of that. Because Jesus Christ, God, doesn't change his mind and say, well, you remember that promise I made 2,000 years ago? I've decided I don't want to do it. He doesn't do that because he's the same. That's why we can say his word endures forever. Amen. That's why he says, I'm going to do this, and we can say, okay, God, I may not know when. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't need to know when. I can be just like Abraham and Isaac. Wandering around in a place that's not my own, this world, 
looking for a city whose builder and maker is God, and knowing that that promise is going to be fulfilled. I just might not know when it's going to be fulfilled. You know, I look at this passage, and I, I look and I see where it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. God has made us a promise. It came the first time as that baby. As I told a person here not too long ago, he's all grown up now. Yeah. He's not coming back as a baby. He's coming back as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's coming back and we're going to be with him. And all the world will know just who Christ is. I can say <coughs> that I am ready and looking forward to that time that he comes back. And I can say that uh, it could be just as like that lightning. You know, there's signs for that, too. The storm gathers, and the weathermen all holler, and they put out all these warnings and, uh, and all that. But the best warning is, is Rachel herself. <clears throat> she has sinuses that just to tell you exactly how bad the tornado is going to be. And there's signs that we can look at, and we can say it's coming. But we don't know the day or the hour. Christ told us very specifically at that point neither did he you know why I believe we don't know the day or the hour we go around going I got plenty of time I don't need to get ready I've got time but I do not know when he's going to Neither does anyone on this planet. Only God knows that. Are you ready for the second advent, the second coming of Jesus Christ? Are you ready to meet him? Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and go to our Lord. Our Father, as we come to you in the name of Christ, Lord, just pray that you be with us as we come to this time of invitation. We're praying that if there's any decision that needs to be made this morning, that we would make that. Lord, we thank you that you came that first time for salvation. And Lord, we look forward to that second time when we'll be with you. For we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Okay. Together. Look around. I see most of you would say, yeah, I'm ready for that second coming of Christ. I know people who aren't, and I'm sure you know people who aren't also. But are you looking forward to that second coming of Christ? Some people look forward to certain things. I, I remember when I was a whole lot younger. I'm not even going to tell you how many years ago it was. But I was a whole lot younger, and I could get a driver's license back. I remember <coughs> looking forward to that day I could get that driver's license. Now I'm not so sure. <laughs> Are we looking forward to Christ in that same aspect? You realize when he comes, Everything that is here is meaningless. It's what we have there and what we have with Him. Are you looking forward Amen. to that time of Christ? As we stand, as we sing. Page 550. Or 530 in the blue book. 550 in the red. I 
Breath.